after pissing deep water fish off quite substantially, I'm going to shut up and let him talk about his scientific data and his scientific evidence, and then we'll get back to whatever ideas we want to be ridiculous with. So, go. Oh, come on, don't trip on me. <laughs> oh, God, he's being so sensitive right now. Just hey, say what you want to say. I'm going through an emotional and a tough period, okay? I'm just saying. Anyways, what That's I'm trying to say... my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Not yours. <laughs> God, anyways. Um, Inside please. joke. Ah. <clears throat> More space, yes. So what I'm trying to say <laughs> no, no, no. is that... The concept of these substances, um, I was Russian. going to say that um, a lot of users of magic mushrooms talk about synesthesia, where they perceive sounds as color. I mean, sounds as colors and visual stimulation as auditory stimuli. Are you okay? Yeah, this is the cockroach. <laughs> oh yeah, roach is stuck in our vent, the heating vent. So roach is our pet cockroach. Just so you guys know. <laughs> Anyways, so what I'm trying to tell is that it is possible that as people believe um, mushrooms are not really like opening up spiritual gateways into other dimensions, but rather is just like giving us a complex uh, storm in our neuronal connections. As for example, if our visual um, signals are not really going through our, you know, the whole visual network inside our brain but it's going through the auditory network and that could be perceived as like um, colors being sounds or sounds being colored or the vice versa or something like similar to that so depending on that it could be said that a lot of theories about magic mushrooms uh, especially Terence McKenna's famous uh, theory that the mushrooms is what led to evolution of the intelligent humans homo sapiens from homo erectus stage and there's a very cool graphic comics about it um, and uh, that would actually be totally uh, proved. Uh, that would actually totally be discredited. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty big claim to make, but it would be awesome to hear more from you guys of what you think based on scientific data about mushroom usage and uh, historical formation of these mushrooms. and Or personal use. Or personal experience, if you have any. So with that, I guess... Uh, we can start talking about the fifth dimension a little bit. So I'll leave Zedia to expand on the fifth dimension and see. I don't want to expand on the fifth dimension. The fifth dimension is ridiculous. The fifth dimension is. The spoon doesn't exist, guys. <laughs> Wait, I want to talk about the shroom thing. Okay. First of all, don't use the word user because it makes it sound like Heroine. call them yeah <laughs> call them like voyagers or something okay you know the official term is myconauts so if you guys want to be called nice. yeah if any one of you would like to be labeled as such or also, identify as such then um all right terence was a little crazy okay terence mckenna did a lot of drugs not not a scientist you know more in the social sciences so like just because he said something. The, also, the whole thing about spiritual gateways, there are no fucking gateways, man. You are the gateway. Like, you are it. There is no separation. So, the idea that... What are you doing? I'm steeping your teeth. Thanks. Why not do you talk? necessary. Okay. <laughs> so, it's not like any psychedelic opens up anything new. It just... If anything, it diminishes the amount of thinking that you're doing in your mind. And shifts your perception in a way that you understand, oh, the way I perceive things is not the only way to perceive things. So, that's the magic of mushrooms. Ah. Well, the magic of mushrooms does not only stop there, because, um, so you guys, aspiring or non-aspiring myconauts, should definitely check out this dude called Paul Stamets. He's a legit mycologist, and he has been researching mushrooms over awesome. for, like, for awesome. his whole life. Yeah. He, we ordered some shiitake from yes. uh, fun, fungi perfecti so you guys should definitely order some it's very cheap and it, it comes actually, in a box 
And it's shiitake mushrooms. Yeah, which are really good to eat. Grows in your house. No hallucinogen or hallucinatory side effects. Goes great with stir fry. Anyways, I was going to say so the basic structure of a of any mushroom is based on this complex network which forms the base of any mycelium. outgrowth called the mycelium. And as we seen mycelium is just extended like cells and it's possible for different um compatibility types of uh, mushrooms to come together compatibility types referring to their sexual behavior um to come together and fuse their mycelia so basically it could be called like a, a like it could be given the form of an form of the intercourse if you want to call it that so essentially mushrooms do act like intelligent beings in the fact that there is another uh it's not exactly a mushroom but i mean scientifically it's a uh, it used to be classified but it belongs to a totally different family of organisms called umaceae but they behave very similarly to fungi and it's called uh, dictyostelium dictyostelium when it's uh, reproducing what will happen is that the several different dictyostelia will actually migrate towards each other and form this huge singular body uh of like an amoebic body which does not have a single form and then it would form a single outgrowth from there and thus reproduce from that rather this than this is different from mycelium though Yeah, this is different from mycelia, but mm. what this is like another example of like intelligent um or what we know as intelligent behavior among animals such as like self assembly. So self assembly is very present throughout your own body if you talk about your cell membranes or anything. But this is All main things are self assembly. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I mean <laughs> it's just that the whole fact that they come together Okay, what's your point? You've said a lot. My point is that rapid. there are opinions about mushrooms being intelligent intelligent beings yeah but i mean everything is intelligent in that way no every well if you think about the mycelia it's like the internet essentially yeah yeah no i know i know of this idea <laughs> but um intelligence is matter it's not separate so like it's not mystical or amazing i mean it is amazing in some way mm-hmm. that mycelium or mycelia whatever they form this huge network of living cells and actually they say that um mycelium uh formations are the largest living things in the world because That's they true. cover so much space um It's just intelligence. Pure <laughs> intelligence. And uh, that's that's all there is. It's all pure intelligence. So, I don't know. Um, But how do you Okay. Okay, yeah. for what? Mm, I was going to say well, mushroom fact of the day, people just found out a new species of mush- fungus oh, yeah. that can actually break down polyurethane, which is uh, a major plastic. I think this no, is sure. this is going to happen. One day we're going to have too much trash and we're going to be like, "Oh man, how the hell are we going to clean this up?" And then what we're going to do is we're going to throw spores all over the um garbage sites that we've built over landfills. Landfill. Mm, there you go. And and then it's just going to be mushrooms at first and then it's going to start turning green and then we're going to soon have trees all over it and the world's going to be saved and we're all going to live happily ever after i don't really believe this i was going to say with that happy thought we'll leave you be but um with the dispelling of this utopic dream Oops. we'll still let you be <laughs> sorry guys uh yeah sorry man <laughs> whoopsie anyway so yeah. uh post your replies about what you think about mushrooms and um we'll tell you more once we know more peace